Hi, I'm Ellen Adler, and I moved to Troy, I guess it was in 2018. I lived in Vermont for something around 15 years, and would always pass through Troy, and started coming into Troy, found it a very fascinating place. The first place that absolutely fascinated me was the gas holder building. That it existed and it was so whimsical and I grew up in New Jersey and when I saw that building I was just excited by it. And I love being near the river. I love the sunsets here, really beautiful. I, I love the history of the place and I have my hands in a number of hopeful projects having to do with the people that built Troy, the industries that grew up here. There's so much water in Troy and everything in the world before the train, before the truck, before the car was dominated by water. It still does dominate many aspects of our life. Putting a show together is very cumbersome. It's a lot of work. And I got to know Hernan and he had this space and we started to talk. And the fact that he's around the corner makes it much easier to deal with because if there's an issue, all I have to do is walk around the corner. This end of town is really evolving and I want to see it go further. And it's so close to where I live here in Washington Park. So all positive things. And I want to see I want to see it flourish, keep flourishing. I love walking. I love walking, not having to get into my car. There's many places you can go close by as People's Island. You can go on your bicycle in a matter of minutes. You're somewhere green and beautiful. And the downtown is beautiful and I can mark it. It's just so wonderful to get up on the weekend, walk and get what I need for the week and I don't really have to go to any big markets and little things that you might need you can always pick up. If you want to see the photographs, follow me. So I've been photographing people, everything, forever. I'm an extremely curious individual, and, and also I love engaging with people. It's sort of a hallmark of my personality. So here is my friend who passed away a few years ago, the photographer Robert Frank. He lived on Bleecker Street in New York City, and he also lived at Cape Breton Island. So this is the lady who introduced me to Robert. Both of them are no longer with us. She was one of the loveliest, just fantastic women. A friend of mine said, you have to meet Mary Goodwin. So I was going through the village of Mabu on the way back to Cape Breton. And I finally had the moment to stop at her house. And we had a grand time. And she turned around to me and she goes, you want to meet Robert Frank? Let's go to Robert Frank's. And I was like, she goes, I said, well, sure. Do you know who he is? I said, yeah, he's so famous. <laughs> so we went down. He's across from the ocean in, uh, on a road off the town of Mabu. And I walked in, knocked on the door. His wife, June, wasn't there. And I, certainly, I must have talked and asked questions for an hour straight until I got the response, which I was absolutely convinced that he was going to throw me in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't be the first person that wanted to do that. Because all of a sudden I hear this voice coming out of Robert, and he's a pretty laid back guy. And he says exactly what he thinks. And he goes like this Don't get nervous, Don. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he goes, Enough! And I was like, Oh, no, oh, I did it again. Let's go, Mary, before I get killed. So these are pictures on this wall here of Troy. This is down in South Troy, a woman. A lot of people come to my friend's garden in South Troy. Hannah's 
and she's a big mulberry tree. And I saw this woman that, believe it or not, she's a grandmother. And I just thought she and her grandchild were so beautiful together, so I took that picture. This is my friend Nan, who is a student at RPI and very brilliant. And his appearance was so extraordinary, so I walked up, up to him and said, can I take your picture? Because his bowler hat was so incredible. And this is a picture that's taken at the Goodwill that I, I have no idea what I'm doing technically, but I'll just play with the camera on the iPhone. And I needed to get some of the stuff in the background out of the way. And then I was like, oh, I like it. That's it. He's a terrific guy. This is a fellow who was painting outside a few years ago in Troy. And I was like, it's, it's cool. Cool picture. This is my friend Hannah, her garden, that she's done amazing things with this empty rubble lot. And if you live in South Troy, many people know Hannah, and she's a fantastic resource for vegetables and bees. This is a girl that I met where they have the sprinklers down on the waterfront. And the kids were having so much fun, I actually went in with them, which is usually the case. <laughs> this is a picture. Uh, off of river on the as you're leaving Troy. I don't know, I don't know what every neighborhood is called, but it, it's such a beautiful structure and it's so symbolic of Troy, its decaying grandeur. We you see that all over the place and it breaks my heart to see these things coming down. And there's another girl that I met in Troy. She's just so adorable and animated. Can I take your picture? This is the hot dog man. Um, actually, my friend Tony, who has the center gallery in Albany, asked me to put some of my photographs in when I first uh, moved to this area. And it won an award. This woman teaches at Harvard, something like that. I don't know. I've never cared about awards, but that one won an award. But the extraordinary thing about that picture, a friend of mine, Tom, said, you can't see clouds anymore. They built the building across the street, which precludes you from having that sky. But it's a, a wonderful picture. And it's identify what it is. The hot dog? What's it it's called? Famous, famous, famous hot dog. Famous, famous lunch. Famous lunch. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, that's good. Uh, these are two boys that I have worked with at the Boys and Girls Club, and they have wonderful names. This is Chance. And this is Paris. And this, I was going down after teaching at a school in North Troy one afternoon. And they were like this. And I was like, Lauren, what are they doing? She said, they're flying, Ellen. I was like, what? They're flying. I started snapping my camera. And uh, that's the last picture that I think anybody ever gave Robert Frank. And his wife loves it. She calls it the dancing boy. <laughs> I think it's got sort of a halo on it. Mm -hmm. That's the, when I, the little girl down here, I think this maybe is her brother. Okay. So I took this, as you go over the South Troy Bridge, I don't know what that neighborhood's called, but I've walked pretty much all of Troy. I love to walk. And I saw this in the backyard and went close enough to get a picture because I thought the balance and the color and the, the, uh, vintage feeling about it was so pretty. This first picture here, these are three photographs from Vermont. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a bagel store with a stream going through it in Manchester, Vermont. It rained and rained and rained and rained and never stopped raining. These three kids were about to get in the river and they were just soaked, water. And they were so adorable, and they were having so much fun. Again, I wanted to get in the river. I love to swim. And I said, can I take your picture? To me, the, 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 the crux and the wonderful thing here is the boy putting his head up to get the rain. More water after they're already soaked. I just think it's a beautiful moment. And they were so happy, and I brought it to their family after, and they really appreciated. This little girl was staying at my friend um, at the Wilburton Inn in Vermont, and her parents asked me to take her picture. She's such a girl, but I don't mm -hmm. care. <laughs> this adorable child, just so beautiful. And of all the pictures, this is the one that's my favorite. It's 
just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful little girl. This woman, when I first moved to Vermont, we took the slow road to Canada. My girls were getting a little older. And I saw a sign for gooseberries. I had no idea what gooseberries were. So I followed the sign. And I met this woman. I believe her name is Ruth. I've given away probably hundreds of photographs over the years. I'm happy to do it. She's the only person who ever wrote me a note, you know? And every single year until she passed away, apparently, she sent me a Christmas card. She would tell me about her grandchildren. She's just such a wonderful, appreciative person. And what I often say is, I'm happy to give you the picture, but I often feel like many people feel there's only three merchandise. She got the gift. <laughs> so I feel it's a gift to interact with people, and I also feel it's a gift to have the opportunity to see and, and kind of proclaim beauty. It's everywhere. I mean, you can look down the sidewalk and see gorgeous beauty. It's just, it's all around us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is just when I pulled around oh. during COVID in mm -hmm. the city, just playing with the color. I just think, you know, I never know what direction. I just play with it until I get it the way I want it. This was at night in Hudson, New York, and it's such a creative, mixed community. It's not all upscale, but I thought that window was just fantastic. I recently took a trip and I was in Finland and I walked and walked and walked. I just love to walk. And I walked to what I thought might be a beach, but it was a shoreline. I might have been overlooking Russia, probably. And I saw, I walked around a boat yard and I saw this sort of Gustavian chair and I thought that was just like the picture of Troy. Indicative of the place I was, the color, the light was different. So, I took that picture, and I like it with Hasa Brack. This is a picture, I, in 2017 I went to India, and, and this is in South Goa, and this woman, it was just so beautiful, and she was a maid, and she came outside, and her colors were glorious, and I think it's just beautiful. She was beautiful. And these are children, front of a house in South Goa, and they were so happy to have their picture taken. I love interacting with children. I find them far more interesting than adults most of the time. You never know what you're going to get. I paint and draw and do everything, but this feels like India to me. I was walking around in Mumbai and just looking into this kitchen or place where they were making food. I think the colors belong to India. This was in South Goa in the market, and the flowers are just beautiful. And the way they screen them, you can see the most, the poorest houses with leaking roofs, and yet they will make these configurations with scarves and flowers, which are just beautiful. You really can't find coffee in India. I tried and gave up immediately. And I'm a very steady morning coffee drinker, but chai is what you do have. And this guy is making chai on the street. So I am 66 and I started going to Cape Breton when I was 17 years old. I spent my childhood going to Florida with matching coats and, and patent leather shoes with my younger sister. And if you've seen the movie um, Dirty Dancing, my mother's best friend's sister was the director. That was a lot like my childhood, but also very creative. And I, it wasn't me. And then a friend of mine convinced me to go on a program where you were living very close to nature in Cape Breton Island. And the minute I got there, I was born again. <laughs> So this is at my friend Robbie's store. They were painting. Well, he's got all these barns, and I just think the colors are beautiful. This is right down the street, down the hill from where his property is. 
And that's just a gentle moment of man at the end of the day kissing and take Breton on Lake Man's face. I think I took this picture about 10 times because I looked out my camera and then kept running and moving and running and moving because I saw this configuration of the ducks at the end of the day and the sunset and I just thought it was beautiful. This is right outside of Inverness, Nova Scotia. And I just think the way the horses look, again, I got out of my car and just ran and took the picture. It's just poetic, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wild cranberries in North Sydney. And they do taste really good. Especially when you're smushing the smarties. <laughs> <laughs> He's passed away, Baxter. They're my neighbors in Canada. This is Baxter and Evelyn Ingram. The most brilliant man. He was truly a country renaissance man. And Evelyn's a retired teacher. And they're so revered and so loved in the community that I go to. This is an adorable little girl whose parents opened a dairy in Cape Breton. And I just, she and her sister, the minute they see me, they throw their bikes down and they start running around and having fun. And I'm not going to mention her name, but I think that is just adorable. These are children right around the corner selling corn. That's in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. And I've never seen such a big wood pile. And that's right down the street from John Marshall and his brother. And he's got an antique store. And because of my friendship with Robert Frank, I became friends with John Marshall. And I showed him that. He goes, well, that's a perfect picture, Ellen. 